you know, I have to praise the Lord for his written word and the prophecies, uh, especially in regards to the last days and how easily it makes it to go forth and proclaim things well in advance of them happening. And uh, we've all known for many, many years who the man of sin is, but it seems like every time he opens his mouth now, he makes it that much easier for us to point him out. But then again, Satan knows his time is short, so he's not going to be hiding much anymore. He's too busy because uh, they're going for the big numbers now. They don't care about that small remnant people that are prophesied to go forth and uh, destroy his work. He figures we're so small in number that we're not going to be able to do anything. But check this out. This is what the Pope just released. Now, this article touches on the high points of the dissertation. But check out the headline. It says, How to Make the World a Better Place in 2018, According to Pope Francis. Now, check out his high points in his uh, address or audience or dissertation, or whatever you want to call it. The first one, of course, is uh, Stop the Anti-Migration Rhetoric. Give thanks to countries that have taken in refugees. He doesn't mention the fact that uh, a lot of this that he pushes is illegal. Uh, the next one is, of course, end the war in Syria. Uh, he then says, surprisingly enough, because we all know about the Vatican's connection with Big Pharma, but he says to invest in medicines and treatments that are not always profitable. He says, beware of robots taking away jobs, close the gap between the rich and the poor, and then, of course, end child labor. Now, some may say those are noble causes, and some are, and some are purely political. Uh, but the reason I'm pointing this out is that this man who claims to be a Christian and who not only leads 1.2 billion Catholics, he's also considered the leader of over a billion Protestants since June 26, 2000, when he was placed as the leader of the One World Church, of which all churches are now members, well, except, of course, the prophesied obedient remnant people. As is also very apparent, this pope is seen by most of the 1.5 billion Muslims as a godly and trustworthy man to the point they openly salute him on camera, just as the Nazis did not too long ago. But did you notice, not one time in his entire dissertation for 2018 did he mention the need to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Not once. In fact, in his entire published address which is listed right here on the Vatican, we see he only mentioned Jesus in passing one time. If you hit F3 on this page and type in the name Jesus, you'll see what I mean. And he only used his name as a way to appeal to the flesh of those suffering disease or in sin and manipulated the usage so as to make it appear as if Jesus was promoting ecumenicalism and the political hot button issues of his office known as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which, by the way, was mentioned by the Pope 10 times in his dissertation, five times in the actual address, and five more times when it was referenced in the footnotes. In other words, he only mentioned Jesus in an ecumenical and political fashion, but promoted his universal declaration of human rights as the key means by which to better 2018. Can you imagine what the Apostle Peter would have preached if he had an audience as big as these popes do? I mean, one could see him declaring 2 Chronicles 7.14 that says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. It sounds like something everyone alive can benefit by in 2018, doesn't it? Or what of when Peter stood up the very first day he actually had a small audience of men from many different nations, as the popes do daily? But... Peter didn't cower in fear, thinking he may offend somebody in that crowd that may hear him speak, as this Jesuit pope just did. In fact, Peter boldly stated in Acts 2.21 that day, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But if the pope said that on a world stage, he would lose all of his political connections. And he knows it. You know, the truth is, Peter even spoke like that without the use of a bulletproof Pope mobile or an army of Vatican Secret Service to keep him safe. Peter knew the God of Heaven would protect him as long as he was in his will. But we all know the popes do not worship the God of Heaven. I've done a couple of videos on that one alone. Hence the reason for the bulletproof Pope mobile and the armed guards that are always nearby. Well, as has been obvious for centuries, in the Vatican, the need to uplift the creatures over and above the Creator has become apparent in how they promote hundreds of dead humans as living saints in marble. Yet, whenever you see an image of Jesus in Rome, or any church Rome controls for that matter, he is either hanging dead on a cross, sprawled out dead in the arms of his mother, as an infant 
during the pagan festival of Saturnalia or Bromelia, or like some people call it Christmas, or he is standing in marble with his heart literally bursting from his chest as if he was just shot in the back by a sawed-off shotgun. In all cases, the dead humans with the kneelers before them suggesting that you pray to them for help, all of them look very much alive and able to answer your prayers. But the creator of those humans is displayed by the popes as either dead in the act of dying or as an infant who is completely and utterly unable to do anything for you. And by the way, it was also stated in Romans chapter 1 verses 22 to 25 that they will be professing themselves to be wise they became fools and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to the uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. And yes, the homosexuality of the popes and the prelates in Rome is actually a fulfillment of the prophetic utterance in that passage as recompense for all that they have done to trample underfoot the written word of God. Christian prophecy is that accurate. Thank you for watching. God bless.